Hey, this is another episode of Chain Global Graph. I'm your host, Adrian Schwendt. And today I want to talk to you about mapping, in particular about mapping non-RDF data to a rich graph-based RDF structure. This is something you will do a lot because in reality, a lot of data you have will not be available in RDF. So you will take sources like CSV, XML, JSON, relational databases, whatever you have, and you will define some steps to map this to RDF. And this is exactly the thing I want to talk about. We will do that in two parts. In this part, I want to first talk about what we actually do when we define such a mapping. And in the second part, we will have a look at the mapping based on an example with a utility we create, which supports you in exactly that process. So let's first talk about what we actually mean with mapping. When you tell someone that you convert CSV data to RDF, they might understand that in a way that when you convert a PNG file to a JPEG, for example. If you do that, you don't really need anything else than a tool which can open a, J a PNG file. And it's very likely that you can simply say export as JPEG or even save as JPEG. So you don't really have to do much to get a JPEG out of a PNG file. When we talk about mapping RDF, that's not really working like that. We have on the left side non-RDF data and on the right side we have actually a richer structure, a graph-based structure in RDF and you need to define how the mapping can be done. And I would like to explain you now based on an idea of a colleague of mine, Benny, which actually came up with this idea, what this process of mapping actually really means. So the first question is, is it really about the mapping? And can already give you a hint, it's actually not really about the mapping. Let's try a different point of view. Why are we actually even going to do that? Why do you take CSV files, XML files, and you try to transform them to RDF? I've converted a lot of CSV files in my life, and I can tell you I really hate CSV for the simple reason that it's not strongly enough defined. If people give you a CSV, you are in for many, many, many surprises can be crappy encoding, it can be strange date formats, and so on. So CSV is not a very strong thing which defines clearly what you have to do with the data. It's simply a way to export easily from other systems. So the idea of mapping to RDF is that we can describe the data better. I often use the term machine readable, but again, my colleague Benny said, while it is actually machine readable, it's also human understandable. So it's about lifting files like CSV files to a level that we and the machine can better understand what the data is really about. So if the data is better, we can actually use it better because we have less interpretation issues while looking at the data. So what do we need to do? We take the data and in the mapping step, we have to add the meaning. And the result of that is basically meaningful data. It's data which really makes sense in the particular context of where you want to use it. And obviously we use RDF to, to reach that. So with RDF, we can describe not just the data, but also the meaning and we get this, what we call meaningful data. So that's what we actually do. You have these two things, the data and our interpretation. We bring this together and we get meaningful data in RDF. And that's pretty much what we have to do in the mapping step. Interestingly, when you look at your CSV files, the meaning is actually one question. And the question is, what is in the data? And you will have a look at that. And when you know the domain a bit, or when someone helps you understanding the domain, you will figure out that these are things. So basically, the mapping process is kind of a things factory. You, you define what things you will find in this data, and you describe it in a way that the machine can actually define and complete these things. Let's have a look at an example. This is a data set we have from one of our government customers. 
The labels are in German, but that shouldn't really bother you. What you see when you look at this file, this is a relatively easy to interpret domain. It seems to be some kind of name and address combination. And if you know German, you know a little bit more, you will see that we really have a full address according to, in this case, Swiss standards. The interesting thing is that what's not visible in here is what one line represents. And because I know the domain and because I can interpret enough in this file, I can say that there are things in this data which are not explicitly said. So it's very important that we say these things and we explain that in a way that the machine can do something with it. So coming back to what does one entry in a row actually mean? The entry in this particular field is a company. So each row in this table represents one company. That's very interesting because that was not really set. It was maybe obvious for us, but for the machine, doesn't have any clue that this should be a, or could be a company. So let's go further. When we check the columns now, we will see that the company seems to have a name. So in this particular example, the name is Aure Versorgungsage, which is, side note, electricity provider in Switzerland. And the next row is obviously the company address. And if we continue that, we know that PLSAT is actually the Swiss shorthand for uh, zip code, ORT is the location, and then we have some additional information, which is again in this case dataset specific. So we are pointing to a Swiss municipality. This is this GDE number. And here you already need to know in the domain we are working what this relationship actually means. So we seem to point to a municipality, but Unless you really work with this data, you don't really know what this relationship is about. So again, when I map this file, I will have to describe what this relationship to this number actually means and how we can model it in RDF. The last row is the Canton. This is also uh, some regional organization in Switzerland. It's not really important here. The important thing is that we really had a look at this data set and we try to understand what does it mean in the particular context of this customer, because that's, that's where we got it from. And how can we describe that in a way that it becomes more useful than this pure CSV dump? So what we actually do in this merging process or in this mapping process is we merge data and meaning to, in this case, a company. Things. And that's exactly what you do when you map non-RDF data to RDF. So the interesting thing is that in most tools available right now, users actually know the things, they know their domain, they know the things I was just talking about. And then they get very confused by RDF because we tell them that you have to do this strange thing here to get this data from here to there. So we need a different approach of having a look at that. And that's what we will see in the second part of this presentation. So the long story short is instead of talking about RDF, let's talk about things like, for example, this company in this, in this particular mapping. That's it for the first step of this tutorial. In the second part, we're going to look at a particular mapping of a file based on our tool we make available. You can download it. I will link to it in the show notes. See you there.